Hello and welcome to a quick one episode series of Tech by Example, where we, today we will be tackling Markdown. So I'm going to guide you through how to use Markdown and write in it by just creating an example document. So there are a few different flavors of Markdown and there's just a few specified universal standards that come from John Gruber's initial implementation, uh, but different flavors of Markdown support different features and may treat different pieces of syntax differently. So since my channel is targeted at developers, we're going to tackle GitHub flavored Markdown or GFM. I'm not going to be tackling the GitHub related features of it, uh, like linking to specific users or things like that. Uh, but if you want a showcase of those features, I can do a short video on that later. Uh, so there are also a lot of other popular flavors. You have Common Mark, which GitHub flavored Markdown is actually built on top of. And then you have things like Pandoc's implementation of, Mar of Markdown and R Markdown and a bunch of others that might have like different syntax and features. So I will mention when a feature I talk about is specific to GFM uh, and is not in the base implementation because that means that it may not be in all of the flavors you want to use. So you, my use of GFM here is not even to say that I think that GFM is the best flavor of Markdown. It has some features missing that I use all the time when I write in Markdown, like being able to embed math syntax uh, through LaTeX by encasing things in dollar signs, among a lot of others. But it's still probably the most applicable, and you will get pretty much everything you need in the base implementation from this video anyway. So Markdown is not just useful for things like readmes and documentation, because a lot of popular text focus apps that you may see like in the productivity space, for example, Obsidian or Ulysses, and to a lesser degree, Notion and Rome Research also use Markdown or are based on its syntax to some extent. So this tool is extremely useful outside of just developer things. So in fact, I actually wrote this script in Markdown uh, using the app Obsidian. And in this video, I will be using VS Code because I thought it's much nicer to actually have a preview that's going to match what we have. So we have a extension installed here called the GitHub Markdown extension pack. And that, if you see right here, this preview window here is going to match our uh, GitHub, what GitHub will show when we push our Markdown up there. So uh, to enable this preview, when you open a Markdown file, you just hit this little preview button right here. You'll see it's the two things with the magnifying glass right there. Uh, so now that we are all set up, we can jump right in. So we're going to start, as most documents do, with headers. So headers in Markdown are specified by pound signs, and they mirror how headers work in HTML, where there's one through six, where one is the biggest and six is the smallest. So you just use the number of pound signs of whatever level of header you want. So we can just go ahead and say that. So uh, if you see here, second level header is going to be a bit smaller than that. A third level header is going to be even smaller. A fourth is going to be even smaller than that. And then a fifth is going to be even smaller. And finally, a sixth is going to essentially just look like bolded text. So that's pretty much it for headers. Once you have that down, you can pretty much do everything you can with headers. Uh, and we can move on to normal text. So there is one thing to note with normal text. And that is going to be how GitHub or how Markdown in general treats blocks. So blocks are how it differentiates between the different pieces of your text, which eventually get rendered into the different HTML tags. Uh, because how Markdown works is essentially a shorthand for HTML. So when we are writing in normal text, we have one thing that beginners tend to trip on, and that's how to actually separate text into new lines. So you may expect to that um, if you just have some text and then you put on a new line, that it will push onto a new line. But as you see here in the preview, that is not the case. So the way that we actually want to do for, the way that we actually want to have new lines is either you can leave a blank line in the middle, or if we wanted to use the alternate syntax and keep those lines grouped together right here, you can put two spaces at the end of the preceding line and that will push the next line onto its own line. So that is pretty much that quirk for normal text. So now we can move on to emphasis. So emphasis is going to be all of our things like bolds and italics. Uh, and we're going to tackle sort of all of these styled text options here. So here we're going to start with our emphasis options, which are bold and italics. So if we want to have emphasis, we are going to use the same marker. We're going to use either asterisks or we are going to use underscores. So we will encase our text in that. So if we want to have text that is italics, then you can see here if we wrap it in either one set of asterisks or one set of underscores, 
then we will get our text rendered in italics. So then we have for bold, we just instead of using one, we use two. So if we have bold text here and we put it in two asterisks, then you'll see it's in bold. Um, and if we want to do it with underscores, we can do that as well. You can also nest these options. So if you want to have something in bold and italics, you could have, let's say you wanted to do, you could do it like this with three asterisks and that'll do that or three underscores, or you can mix the symbols and you could have bold. And then let's say you only wanted this part to be in italics. You could have it like that and that will work as you expect for that. So that is it for sort of emphasis. And we can move on to a GitHub flavored markdown specific feature, which is strike throughs. So for strike throughs, we just want to encase our text in two tildes and it will go ahead and cross out our text for us. So that is a GitHub flavored markdown specific feature. Some other implementations might have it, but it is not in the base implementation. Um, so now we can move on to our final just style thing. And that is going, to, or actually not our final just style thing, but we can move on to block quotes. So if you want to have a block quote, then what you're gonna do is just start your line with a right angled bracket. So if you go ahead and do that, then you'll see it is indented slightly and also it is in a slightly uh, lighter color and it has this bar preceding it. So you can put your quote on multiple lines by having just another block quote there or you could not include that block quote and it will still work because of how GitHub treats, uh, because of how Markdown treats blocks. But I think it's personally nicer to prepend each line with that quote symbol. Uh, so now we can move on to our file, final piece of styled text, and that is going to be code. So for code, there are two things that you can do. So you can have inline code. And to do that, you're just going to wrap your text in one asterisk. And you'll see here that it gets a little background. It gets put in a monospace font, and it is like that. Uh, and then you can also have code blocks. So those are our two options here. And if we want to have a code block, then what we do is we are going to wrap a block of text in three asterisks. And let's say we wanted some Python here. So we could write that. And you'll see there, it just looks like normal code. But if we write the name of the language right before on this first line here, right after the asterisks, you'll see that we'll actually get syntax highlighting. Uh, which is a very nice feature of GitHub flavored markdown uh, and is extremely useful for things like documentation and things like that. So those are our two options. You can see that if we just had another thing here, uh, you, you have syntax highlighting for all of that and it will keep going that block and as long as you are in the asterisk. So that is it for code. And now we can move on to our more functional pieces of text. Uh, going away from just our style text that we just went over here. And let's move into links and images. So links and images are two things that have a similar syntax, but we will start by tackling links. So the way that you are going to have links is you can link to either external resources or local ones. So let's say I wanted to link to my website. So what we're going to do is we have the alt text, which is the text that we actually want to display on our web page, and we're going to wrap that in square brackets. And then we have our URL, and you need to make sure that you're including the uh, protocol that you're using at the start, because otherwise it's going to look for a local resource instead of a remote resource. And if you just do that, then that link will lead to my website. You can also link to local resources. So you'll see in this file, I have another markdown file called another.md. So if I wanted to link to that, so what we could just do is we could have a link and we could just say this goes to another.md. And that will link to that other markdown file. So you'll see here, it previews it and it just has text at the top that says another. So that is links, both remote and local. Now let's just get our preview back up for our correct thing. Uh, that's how you do links. And now we can do images. So images follow a very similar syntax, except for you just have an exclamation point at the start of the line. So I have a image file in here called water.png. 
So we could just go ahead and link to that. You're still going to want to include alt text here, uh, just in case it's like someone's using a screen reader or anything like that for accessibility purposes, or if your images just don't load. Uh, but then it, you're just going to include the link to your thing, and you'll see here that it embeds our image. So that is it for those sort of images and links. So now let's do lists. So lists are, again, another sort of style text, but it's slightly different. So I've decided to break it out here. And what we do with lists is there are two kinds of lists. We can either have unordered or ordered lists. So unordered lists, you're just going to start each line with either a dash or an asterisk. Uh, so we can just have a dash. Uh, and then we can continue our list with another thing and on and on and on like that. So you can also do this with, uh, at, with asterisks here and you'll see that it works the same way. Uh, and that's it for that. So that's it for unordered lists. Now we can go ahead and do ordered. So for ordered lists, what we are going to do is there are two options. I'm gonna show you first the intuitive one and then the one that I recommend and I think is much better. So the intuitive thing is you're just going to have a list like this. And then you have the next line starting with two and on like that. So you'll see here that it is actually formatted as a list. If we go to highlight, it's not gonna highlight that piece of text because it is a list decorator and not actual text. But let's say you might be changing your list pretty often and you don't wanna to have to go and change every single index right there. So the other option you can do is start every single line with a one. So if we just do that, uh, let's go ahead and make sure that this list actually breaks here. Um, so if we do that, you can see we can just do more lists like this. And then let's say we wanted to go back and edit it, it would be much easier because we could just add another line in here. Uh, and boom, it will update our indices for us instead of us having to deal with having to go in and change all of those. Uh, so now we can move into a GitHub flavored markdown specific feature called tables. Uh, so the way that we work with tables is going to be, again, pretty intuitive because that's sort of the idea of Markdown. So first, we are going to have a line of headers, so and those are going to be separated by pipes. So let's just do three columns like this. And so then the next line that we need, you'll see this isn't formatted as anything specific now, is going to be separators. So we're just going to do it like this. We'll have dashes separated by pipes mirroring our header layout. And there we go, that's set up like that. And then we can go ahead and have our actual content on this next line. So you may think that in the source, this does look a little bit messy and is difficult to read. Obviously when it's rendered, it's very easy to read, uh, but there are a lot of solutions for that. I recommend the Markdown All-in-One extension, which I will also link in the description for VS Code. That has a lot of handy things, including automatically formatting your tables in your source code. So now we're gonna get into some GitHub Flavor Markdown specific uh, features. We're going to start off with task lists. So the way that you do a task list is very similar to how you do a list. You're just going to have a list and then you're going to have two brackets there at the start and then you're gonna have your text. So if you want it to be unchecked, then you're just going to put a space in between your brackets and you'll see there it renders as an unchecked checkbox. And if you want it to be checked, then you're going to put an uppercase X in there. And there you go. So that's how task lists work. Now we can move into a uh, one that I see a lot more often, which is uh, in GitHub Flavor Markdown specifically, which are emoji. So the way that you do emoji are you're simply going to put them between two colons. So you're just going to do it like that. Um, there are a bunch of different emojis that you can use. Uh, there is a cheat sheet that I'm going to link down below with all of the different names. There are also some GitHub specific emoji, which are things like logos for their products and a bunch of different variations of the status bar face from Doom. Uh, so if you need to use any of those, you can. Uh, and then finally, there is one like feature that is a good thing to know, but you should praise, like basically never use, and that is using raw HTML. So most flavors of Markdown allow you to use raw HTML. GitHub Flavor Markdown filters down what features you're allowed to use a bit, just to make sure you're not like running arbitrary code on whoever's viewing its system and things like that. 
uh, but pretty much how you do it is you're just going to write in your raw HTML and it will render. So uh, uh, <laughs> we can just say like this is HTML. That's how I spelled that and it will render as HTML. Um, so that is pretty much it. With that, you know all the basics of Markdown and some, mark and some GitHub flavored Markdown specific things. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, this will be especially useful for my upcoming series on how to use Git. Um, so I hope you stay tuned for that. Get subscribed so you don't miss any future videos. Like this video if it helped you learn Markdown. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.